And somewhere around here that on October 16, 1972, two congressmen, Hale Boggs and Nick Begich, disappeared on a small Cessna along with the pilot, Don Johns, and uh, political aide, Begich aide, Russell Brown. I want to take you back to October 1972. The popular Louisiana Congressman Hale Boggs was in Alaska campaigning for another congressman, Nick Begich, when they boarded a plane. But the plane went down during a rainstorm, and nearly five decades later, the cause of the crash and the plane's location remain a mystery. John Walzak has been researching this for years and has a new podcast that is making a lot of people re-examine this case. Certainly, I binge watched it or binge listened to it while I was on vacation, and it's going to be hard to summarize this, John, in five minutes. But how, how do you sort of summarize your investigation? There's some real some bombshell information, uh, no pun intended, in, in your research. So yeah, so the plane disappeared in Alaska, like you said, and people have just assumed that it went down in bad weather for years. Um, and because of that assumption, there were other leads that people didn't follow. So basically what I did is I looked at the history of the disappearance, the search, which was this incredible, massive search, 325,000 square miles, a spy plane, um, but nothing was ever found. And you would think, well, that's not surprising, it's Alaska, but uh, the search commander at the time, he said that they found 95 to 99% of what they were looking for. So actually not as common for a plane just to completely disappear in Alaska with uh, no sign uh, ever surfacing. Um, so I just started researching it uh, out of personal interest. And, um, you know, I've worked on it at points full time and at other points it's been on the back burner. So, uh, but yeah, about a year ago, I started work working full time um, on the podcast and, uh, I, <laughs> I found some crazy stuff. So uh, about 17 months after the plane disappeared, the widow of one of the missing men married a guy who had ties to two prominent mafia families. And that guy killed five or six people. He conducted bombings. Um, he bombed a judge's house. And so there's really this, there are two main questions in the show, which is one, what happened to the plane? And are there any clues about uh, where, where it went or any wreckage that surfaced in, in the last 50 years? And two, what do we make of the claims that this man uh, made in the 1990s? Yeah, and, and, and you know, this podcast has taken you from Arizona to Alaska and back. Uh, what was just your reaction to learning some of these accusations that the, this, this mo uh, John Paisley, correct, is, I believe his name is, um, making you know, the accusation that the plane could have very well been bombed. Yeah, so it, uh, Jerry Paisley, um, he married again, the, the widow of one of the missing men. And, you know, you would hear this kind of allegation and I, I heard it the first time and I thought it just sounded crazy and honestly it kind of blew it off. Uh, but then I started researching it and the man whom he claimed put the bomb on the plane he and uh, he went into business with that man. Um, he has documented ties to two crime families, the Bonanos and the Licavolis. He bombed a judge's house um, in the 60s, uh, and he ended up dying in prison for murder. So a very violent man with documented personal ties to someone uh, who had a, a tie to the crash. So that immediately made me take it more seriously than I would normally just hearing that kind of crazy claim. And how has the response been since the podcast has come out? Is this, is your story going to get more attention? Are, are you ever going to see anything done by the FBI to re-examine this case? Is that even possible? It is possible. So like you said, many people have died. It's been almost 50 years and I, it's been a race against time to track people down and interview them. Um, before they die. And, you know, one of the things that I do in the show uh, is ask for listener help. And the, it actually, it's not a gimmick, really. I, first of all, it's an enormous amount of information, and I'm very grateful for any help that I can get. But second, people have given us new information that has led us to people we couldn't find for years. Um, and we, we got some fascinating new information the other day. So actually, literally 30 minutes ago, I finished recording episode 11, and that was supposed to be our final episode, um, but based on new information that we just received a few days ago, uh, we're gonna be back with more. And one of the really fascinating things other than the bombing allegation is we got a tip, I got a tip a few years ago from a man who said he found part of 
a plane around 1980. And I'll just leave it at that. But part of what we do in the show is we investigate that lead. And in October, um, I actually traveled with a few producers to Alaska. And then another producer, Paul Deccan, and I um, went out on a boat onto Prince William Sound with um, ROVs, those little submersibles, to go look for the plane. Now, you're a journalist, so I know you're sort of not comfortable saying that you thought the, for sure the plane was bombed. But I mean, is this new evidence, this new information that you're seeking, is it, in your opinion, do, you, do can, we, can we say that yet? So I'm very careful to, not to say that it's bombed or that I think it was bombed. But what you can say without a shadow of a doubt is that the allegations are very serious. And the FBI's investigation in the 1990s was very poor. Um, so one of the things that surprised me is that three members of law enforcement who interviewed this guy Paisley in um, jail in Arizona, they all went on the record and said what I just said, that they were really surprised the FBI didn't do a more thorough investigation. Um, the key thing is that it's not too late to get answers. There are people that were named in the allegations who are still alive in Alaska and other places. Um, and but but it's 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 now or never. I mean, it's been almost 50 years. So I think if if we can't do something with the publicity from the show and um, the people calling us, and I'm not sure any answers will ever be had. But if there is a chance for answers to be had, I think that it's now. All right, John Walzak, he's the host of Missing in Alaska, the new podcast that re-examines the uh, disappearance of two congressmen, including Louisiana Congressman Hale Boggs. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate your time. Thank you. I appreciate it.